I know it's only rock and roll, but I like it. Yes, I do. Six hour P227. It's been a long time since I've shot this gun. I forget exactly how long, but I'll bet it's been a year or more, and there's no excuse for that. So there's a good reason to get it out anyway. But the real reason I've decided to bring this gun out today and share it with you is an homage to the P227 from Sig Sauer, because if you did not know, Sig Sauer no longer manufactures this gun. It is no longer available. There may still be some new old stock on distributors' shelves or dealers' stores, but Six Hours no longer manufacturing and shipping this gun. And I think that goes right up there in the damn shame category because this is one of the finest 45 ACP handguns you can buy. I love it. I loved it the minute it came out. I got it the minute it came out, and I've loved it ever since. So I asked Six Hour why they have discontinued this gun, and the answer was really simple. They weren't selling. So that just really goes to prove that the better mousetrap is not always the one that's going to sell. The good news is Sig did leave the door open and said, at least for now. And the at least for now part means if you keep begging them for it, you may see it again. So like I said, I haven't shot this gun in a long time. I'm going to warm up with it. And if I'm going to warm up with a Sig Sauer 45 ACP, I might as well shoot some Sig Sauer Elite Performance 45 ACP. And this is the 230 grain ball, moving at 850 feet per second. comes with 10 round magazines, but there are 14 round magazines available with the extended base plate. I just happen to have a couple of those, so I'm going to use those today. Now let's see if I can hit that shooting tree. Always a challenge. That's what it's for though, right? So I think that may be the first time I've ever gone six for six, my first shots at the shooting tree. I haven't had the shooting tree a really long time, but still, all the more reason to demonstrate why this is such a great gun. Uh-oh, broke the streak. And again. Ah, left one standing. If I have any complaint whatsoever about the P227, it would be that it's a little bit round in the grip for my hands. And considering it's a 10 round magazine, there's really no reason to make it so fat. However, I think a lot of that is this grip. It's got that E2 grip. It's a wraparound one-piece polymer grip. And that grip seems to have a little bit of extra thickness. I bet if I found a pair of thin G10s or something like that, it might make a big difference. Go back over here. So the P227, for those of you who don't know, uh, it came out about, I want to say, five years ago. I think it was around 2014-ish. 
this gun was introduced. And it's really a what do you get when you cross a P220 with a P226 uh, gun. It's, you know, the P220, 45 ACP, and, and really built on that, on that frame and platform. But with the extra capacity, so they've widened it to handle the 10-round magazine, or in this case, the 14-round extended, but that staggered, almost double-stack magazine. But all of the functions and controls are absolutely the same as a P220, P226. It was also available in a variety of configurations, which is, you know, one of SIG's trademarks. Is why have one SKU when you can have 32? Um, and choices are always a good thing. I've got the sort of bare bones one. Um, it does have the night sights, the SIG light night sights. Other than that, this is pretty much the plain Jane variety. And of course, it is a double action, single action. So let's start out double action this time. This gun just really is, uh, it handles 45 so nicely. That extra width, even though I will complain a little bit about it from a grip perspective, that extra width does spread out the recoil and, and it really is just a nice gentle push, a nice gentle roll for the 45 ACP. I like that. Here are two magazines, both from the spring of 2014 and both featuring the P227 on the cover both touting them as the next latest and greatest wonder to come out of Sig Sauer. And back in the spring of 2014, it was just that. It was around that time or shortly after that I picked up my copy of the Sig P227. And I was looking forward to getting this gun at that time. I can distinctly remember um, quite a bit, you know, like eagerly pacing the floor to get it. This was, I was excited about getting this handgun. I absolutely loved it, and I still do. Nothing has changed. I will admit I don't take it out to the range a whole lot, but then I don't really take any specific gun out to the range a whole lot. And of course, there was always the P220. The P220 is probably the most iconic, or at least the most legacy, Sig Sauer. And the P220 looks very much like the P227. In fact, in a previous video, I actually swapped the slides between them. They are completely compatible. The only difference between them is the thickness of the frame, and that is because of the magazine. P227 has a 10-round magazine. So the demise, or at least for now, the demise of the P227 is probably a textbook example of reaction to the marketplace. If you're not selling it, you take it off the shelves. Will it come back? I don't know, but I will tell you that it's very likely that it could come back if there was enough interest generated in it. So there you go. That was just my excuse to get the P227 out and make another video about it. I wanted to do this little homage. Since it is no longer in production, we may see it again or we may not see it again. Mine is not for sale. All right, I'm going to focus just on that shooting tree, see if I can't improve my efficiency and accuracy a little bit. Those hits are actually not bad in terms of windage. They're all almost dead center. Just, uh, they seem to be maybe a little on the low side. So I'm going to try and raise my sight picture a little bit. If you like that shooting tree or if you like that other ADAP target that you saw that's painted pink, either of those could be yours. Well, not those ones, because you can't have them. But you can get ones just like it by contacting Tactical AR-500 Targets. They supplied those to the channel, for which I am forever grateful. And it's even better. There's a 10% discount code for you. I'll put it on the screen right here. But also, look down below in the comments. Okay, let's see. I'm going to try a, like a center hold. Or, <laughs> I could seat the magazine properly, like that, 
and then charge the gun and have an actual round in the chamber. Let's try it that way. Uh-oh. Was that high? I think it was high. Hey, little... Man, that bottom one always is hard. And apparently so is the top one. They're all hard. <laughs> it's not fair. So I'm shooting a lot of different ammo today. Six hour leap performance, of course. I'm also shooting some arms core. I'm gonna shoot some Remington upper middle class and I think some S and D as well. I think I brought a sort of a mixed bag. And I even have some hollow points. Maybe we'll put those on paper. That's the royal we, of course. Okay. Yeah, I think I'm getting dialed in. You know, shooting would be easy if you didn't have to aim and fire at the same time. I know this is a duty gun for some places, some departments or agencies. A little bit of a malfunction here. I thought, <laughs> it's like, wait a minute, there's no way I was 14 rounds, as I was thinking to myself, and sure enough, it was not. Huh. It just did not strip that round out of the magazine. Let's try that again. One of these two extended magazines is brand new, literally. I just took it out of the package last night. That might have been the one. Not sure. So, uh, as, I was, as I was starting to say, I know this, this was adopted as a duty gun by some departments. So I wonder if the uh, gun being discontinued has changed that or affected it. Obviously, parts are still going to be available, probably forever, but damn, those bottom two kill me. That tree, it's hard to see straight on, but that tree is at a really severe angle leaning toward me. So by the time you get down to the bottom, I think the angle is just so weird that it really just gives me fits. That is my excuse, folks, and I'm sticking with it. Okay. <laughs> or if I pay attention, maybe if I'm doing less talking and more shooting. Or not. This homage to the P227 is brought to you in part by the awesome folks at Sportsman's Guide. Sportsman's Guide is a big supporter of the channel, which I greatly appreciate. And I definitely encourage you to go check them out and give them your support. Sometimes I think I can lump people who watch my videos into two categories. People, want, people who hate when I do my exaggerated mag drops. People who hate when I do this. You're probably saying, no, no, no. <laughs> I hate both. This does not have a short reset trigger. It does have the short reach trigger. But even without the short reset trigger, the reset and trigger pull is very light and very short. 
The reset is certainly not as tight if you don't have the short reset trigger. Otherwise, why would you pay to have it? But uh, it is still an incredibly good trigger by anybody's standards. Well, any, by my standards. All right, let's go one hand and let's go double action start. Do you think uh, maybe the 10 round limitation is what caused it not to sell? That is pretty much the industry standard for a 45 ACP, right? 10 rounds. Those that have more than 10 rounds are considered super exceptional, uh, not counting extended magazines, of course. I don't know, I would love to hear your comments, or read your comments, perhaps. You know, seriously, put some comments down below. I would love to know, those of you who have a P227, give me your feedback. How do you, how do you like yours? How long have you had it? Do you shoot it a lot still? On and on. Um, and then, uh, if you don't have one, you know, maybe you considered it and didn't buy one. Those, I'd really like to hear that. So, if you, th if you picked one up at the gun store and ended up taking something else home, Tell me why. I would love to know that. I bet you Sig would love to know that too, although neither I nor Sig are going to pay you for that feedback. <laughs> or just why do you think it didn't sell too well? Too outdated by a lot of people's standards, you think? I think people prefer a polymer gun. This is a alloy frame. and a stainless steel slide with nitron finish, which is awesome. And it is just one heck of a gun. I know a lot of people don't like the double action, single action. Uh, hammer fired guns, they've really kind of fallen out of vogue and then they come back and then they fall out. But you know, right now, people seem to be like, I don't really want a hammer, uh, don't want a double action, single action. Okay. Uh, I won't be surprised if in a few years that changes and all of a sudden this gun comes back on the market. In the 10 round magazine, there are 10 rounds of Six Hour Elite Performance V Crown. The first five are 230 grain, and the second five are 200 grain. Okay, that was the 230. Here's the 200. Okay, that was from 12 yards. <laughs> 